I'm back, baby. We got the crew together in person, and we're talking the top 12 quarterbacks. We're doing a little dynasty download at the end of the show, and you get to find out in today's rankings how incredibly far old man Patrick Mahomes might or might not fall. Stay tuned. Like this video. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday. April 26th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore. What up? Whoa. Yeah. Andy I'm, Holloway back with you. I'm super excited to be here, guys. And uh, we're excited to have you back. How you feeling? Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, I feel great. Uh, back I'm, out on the pickle courts. Back out on the pickle courts immediately. Pickle is life. Mm -hmm. um COVID is gone and yay we're back you it, just you just got snacks chilling on our table in here yeah I mean, you don't want me to eat this <laughs> on air this is a crunchy crunchy piece of cheese crunchy piece of cheese uh so back at normal life for you <laughs> uh no we're excited to have you back Jay Gris was getting irritable mm -hmm. and uh we've got you back in business on ultimate draft week <laughs> The NFL draft, it's here, guys, Thursday. Yes. yes. And we have a lot of fun things planned. We'll wrap up our early rankings shows today. We got the top 12 quarterbacks. Do it a little different today. We're going to count them down to number one overall. Let's try it on. And uh, maybe get into some mailbag. We got a dynasty download on today's show. But ultimate draft week. Mm -hmm. It's happening, and what am I talking about? We have a very special promotion on the Ultimate Draft Kit this week. We're giving away another Listener League spot. Oh, baby. <laughs> and we're giving away a signed Justin Jefferson jersey. Yeah. And a signed Debo Samuel jersey as well. Oh, uh, please stay in <laughs> San Francisco. It's a, it's a 49ers jersey. <laughs> Uh, and here's how you enter to win by this Sunday. So anybody before Sunday, May 1st, Pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com, and you will be entered to win. So we'll be giving away that spot very, Correct. very soon. The Ultimate Draft Kit is, is your uh, number one tool to get ready for the upcoming fantasy football season. There is content available right now in the UDK Plus with the Dynasty Pass. So that's all happening this week. And then we have basically three days of special events on top of the show. Just want to throw in an extra reminder. If you have already pre-ordered the UDK, you are you're in this drawing too. Yeah. Fear not. That's right. So this is your chance to get in if you haven't pre-ordered. Correct. By Sunday, May 1st, ultimatedraftkit.com. On Wednesday, we're going to be doing a community event on our Discord server for everybody supporting the show at jointhefoot.com. Uh, going to talk commissioner questions, how to make leagues better, Everyone, uh, all of our supporters can participate over there. Yeah, and, and and Papa Josh is going to be running this community event, and like with an actual, if you really want to participate with your voice, you'll, you can raise your hand, go on stage, you know, and 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 cut it up in there. Thursday, we have the very special live event, one hour before the NFL draft, a little pre-draft party with the footballers that will be live on Spotify Live, and so that will be happening on Thursday, and then Friday. We'll be doing another live event with our round one reactions, uh, and that is on Friday, an hour before the draft as well. And that'll be on so, YouTube. Yeah. Yes. That'll be on YouTube. So um, lots non -stop. going on. Non-stop yeah. fantasy footballers this week. That's right. And we'll have a show on Thursday as well. Brooksy will be making, what, some predictions on rookie teams yes or sir where they're gonna land yep and we, we got to figure out what's on the line oh. or, or, or are we doing no we we've, we're putting it back yeah the glamour shot the glamour shot the glamour oh, shot yeah. will be coming back also when we make those predictions if we can get two of them right this year yeah I, that's a grand slam <laughs> this year last year uh, we did very well 
Um, yeah, this, you and I did. I mean, well, sure. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, mean yeah. I, I did. Mr. Glamour shot over the there. wellest, but um, yeah, this year it is such a crapshoot. I mean, it, the number one pick's already changing. Yeah, it, it's going to be exciting come Thursday. That that live show we're doing is going to be so hype. Mm-hmm. If you're not yet excited for this draft, join us. Yeah, this will be a lot of fun, and you'll finally have the uh, depth charts figured out. You're going to have your surprises like last draft when poor James Robinson, the Travis Etienne Ooh. draft pick in the first round. There'll be a lot of surprises. I think there are going to be players like Devontae Smith that you're starting to wonder about their long-term value because of picks being made, but we'll find out. Mm-hmm. It's coming soon, Thursday. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Let's get into it. 49ers general manager John Lynch told reporters he cannot imagine a scenario where they let Debo Samuel go. Jason, the Debo drama last week. Do you have any thoughts on whether or not you expect him? Like, What, what are your odds based on everything you've seen uh, of him staying put versus getting traded maybe at or after the draft yeah it's it's very interesting because you know from from all corners it seems like it's not a money thing but I still think that that is the actual route I think that he you was do even with Debo saying it's not money well I, I mean I, the, the whispers I don't think it's about money right now but I think that money was a part of the beginning <laughs> the the fact that he was used so much as a running back. You know, now it's about the utilization. But I think that they use the utilization in the offer to say, well, you know, this is what, what top running backs get paid. This is what top wide receivers. And he's like, well, no, I just want to have a longer career, uh, getting paid more money, and be able to walk well at the end of it. And so um, I I still lean that the 49ers are going to figure this out. Um, to keep him. To keep him. But. You, this could get ugly. This could be a holdout situation. If if he really stands his ground and the Niners stand their ground, they play a game of chicken. You know that that it's just one of those. It rarely ugly works. Situations. Sorry, sorry. It rarely works out for the team. Is what I was going to say. Like where you know you don't. You've got that extra layer, right? It's not just yes, you could force him to kind of lose money or stay there, but you've got a layer of like discontentment and a disgruntled player and a locker room to worry about. So, you know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I know that they're going to want a lot for Debo. Right. And but So the lay of the land is he has one more year left on his contract, on his rookie deal. So he can bet on himself and sign nothing. And then the 49ers options are long-term or franchise, which, I mean, the franchise, that's a that's a good amount of guaranteed money. That's a wide receiver tag. Yes. Hey, hey, yes. Hey, well, yeah, the franchise of the wide receiver. Uh, but the – what you're talking about, Andy, is because of how the bargaining agreement is, where these guys essentially can't hold out and like of a uh, skip training camp and not be there physically. I mean, if you guys recall, I th- I think it was Melvin uh, In- Gordon. No, no Ingram on the on the Chargers one. Did you get the on, on Hard Knocks? The somebody I can't remember who exactly who it was, but they were yeah Melvin Ingram on Hard Knocks, and he, but he was just there. Like yeah, he, he was, was just hanging out. He was not participating, but he was reporting. Yes, he he was there, and then was eventually. I'm traded. reporting for no duty. <laughs> well, Debo is it, there's an animosity here that sure. is uh, it was not there for Melvin Ingram. If I am Debo or his agent, based on his lengthy injury history, I don't bet on myself. I capitalize on what I did. I get something long term. All right, and then more 49ers news. Uh, Matt uh, Miyoko reporting from NBC. Elijah Mitchell playing hurt towards the end of the season. Had a clean. Uh, he needed a cleanup procedure on his knee. Okay. I mean, I, I think we kind of knew he was playing hurt because he was hurt a lot. And they he was fighting to get back out on the field. But having the cleanup procedure, you know, what does that mean for his future? We'll find out on Thursday and Friday. Kadarius yeah. Tony trade rumors about wide receiver Kadarius Tony, their first round pick last year. It seems like those have calmed down. So um, I don't know if we'll see anything happening there. And then uh, more news out of Seattle, which I think this is big news personally. Okay. Uh, they're reporting that it's unclear if or when Chris Carson will be able to return. Um, 
I was on a show two weeks ago on my breakout. They wanted an early breakout, and it was Rashad Penny. That's why. Because I don't believe Chris Carson is going to have the role anybody right now expects him to have. In other words, I don't think he has a big one. Right. Whether or, he's back or whether he's not back, I don't think he's the main runner. It's going to be Penny. Yeah, it will. And and it's it's greater than zero that Chris Carson has played the last football of his career. Yeah, ex exactly. And so Rashad Penny is you know, betting on himself. I, I believe it was the one-year deal with Seattle. Now, the Seahawks won't be what they were because they will either have Drew Locke or Geno Smith or a rookie as their quarterback. But Rashad Penny really showed out. And Baker this, Mayfield. Or, or ba yeah, I mean, it's just somebody. So their, their offense won't be able to rely on a quarterback. But it's Pete Carroll who it's a very high T situation. They will establish it up there. And Rashad Penny, if he's the bell cow running back, I think that he can be you know, sneaky good. We'll have to pay attention to his ADP, but he seems like a guy that will go later that may be a true starting running back that you can get in the middle of the draft. Well, I mean, you just go back to last year where Drew Locke was. Not a very good Denver team. Had some running backs doing some serious damage sure. on that team. You know, he, he can hand it off with the best of them. <laughs> yes, he can. And then Byron Pringle, Bears wide receiver, arrested uh. for uh, reckless driving. Uh, driving with a suspended license. Uh, uh, the Bears cannot afford to lose players. <laughs> they have so few of them. And, uh, yeah, so that's – that's. Uh, does this make it more likely that they take a wide receiver in the draft? I don't know that it makes it more likely, but if if they do not and Pringle has to serve a couple games suspension, I mean, it's just – yeah, they, the Bears don't have a first-round pick because they used it to trade up for Justin Fields. They are – Who now looks like a lame duck quarterback on one of the worst they, teams in football. It is so upsetting that it feels like Justin Fields is – set up to be sacrificed to the NFL. Yeah, that was the expression you used the other day. Is you're and like, why please don't we, sacrifice Justin Fields. Why are we doing this? Like, I think that he – it wasn't a great rookie season. Definitely understand that. But he at least shows, showed some flashes that he can be a starting quarterback. Great or not, if you trade up that many picks to go get a guy, you got to give him oh, he'll a get chance some time. to succeed. He'll get some time, but the team around him is going to be horse doo-doo. Yeah, I mean, th there's there's a – a logic to it though there is a logic to inheriting you know it's a new regime coming in and they inherited what they inherited and they looked at their roster and said the best thing forward for the future of this franchise is to tear it down to the nubs right get out of this cap situation we're in and have a rebuilding plan you know that takes an extra year and so hopefully they just give Justin Fields enough time and he does enough on the field to show a progression, even if he's not great, to where the following year he can get the weapons and, and have a team put around him. Yeah, I don't know if I think what Mike was saying is what I think will happen, which is there comes a point you go Sam Darnold in your career, which is you're hit enough times, your offensive line doesn't do enough, you're, exactly. you don't have wide receivers that are getting separation, so you become gun shy, right? You, you David have Carr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there's a long list of them, and right now you're throwing the ball to – uh, Darnell Mooney. End of list. Uh, yeah, David Moore, Daz Newsome. Oh, I forgot they got Isaiah a, Coulter. They got Equinemius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And oh. uh, to be clear, I, I, I got no no animus against the Bears at all. This is just the reality. And any any true Bears fan, and I've talked to several of them, they know what's happening right now. And many are in favor of the of the it's, idea of tearing it down to the nubs and sure. building it the right way. But it's going to take time. The issue with this strategy is if they end up with a top five pick or or the number two pick or, you know, something like that. Yes. Then you're going, OK, is there a superstar quarterback here that they can draft that they believe in more than the quarterback that just got them, you know, a, right. top, a top five pick? Yep. And wasn't drafted that, by this that's regime, my, right? Yeah. That's my fear with uh, Davis Mills, because I think he's a good quarterback, showed a lot as rookie year, but they're going to have a top five pick in Houston and so it's like not if Davis Mills has anything to say about it yeah. um okay any other news Brooksy no sir nothing else to uh to handle you guys want to talk quarterbacks let's go quarterbacks all right if you want deep dives on all of these players you can go back to the truth episodes uh where we broke down the consistency 
of every quarterback. Those episodes were what February, Brooksy? Actually, I think March, he, uh, late January, I think. Late January. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? That was a long time ago. But uh, today we're just going to be counting down our top twelve early running back or early quarterback rankings. We each put lists together. Um, and, and, you know, when you think about how things will shuffle, I think the quarterback's probably the least likely to shuffle from all the early rankings, you know, in terms of you know, maybe, maybe some of these guys get a different weapon in the draft and you're slightly thinking differently about them. Maybe Aaron Rodgers ends up with a, a top wide receiver, but I think f broadly speaking, it's probably going to be similar to this heading into the year. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Four-point passing touchdown. Um, obviously, no rookies yet in these rankings, but let's count it down. Matthew Stafford at number 12, 34 years old. I got him at 11, Jason at 12, Mike at 14. His best ball ADP right now is QB 10, so we're slightly behind that. He was steady. Yeah, I mean... But not spectacular. It's kind of disrespectful, to be honest, what we're doing here because, you know, he finished last season as the quarterback five he th you know almost threw for 5,000 yards had 41 passing touchdowns and has in his career been a top 10 quarterback many many times and now he's with McVay year two they add Allen Robinson so you know I this is the one guy where I look at and I feel like I don't want him higher because he doesn't run the ball as much I, I want someone who can you know score on the ground because otherwise, if, if he throws for 32 touchdowns, which is decent but not otherworldly, you know, you, you tumble in fantasy football. But at the same time, it just seems like he's just set up to succeed. Their team should do more of what they did last year. And if he finished as quarterback five, now where you, you didn't feel it, though, last year. In well, stretches, no, you, 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 did. you didn't very often because you're playing in a 10, 12 team fantasy league and you have a player that like rarely put up the elite top tier numbers. He was he was the Jalen Hurts, you know, type of experience where it was like steady, but rarely put up a prolific Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, these number one overall weeks that won your week. Like if he got fantasy points for wins, I'd be all over Matthew Stafford this this year. But I don't think they need him to do it as much. And a concern would be his touchdown rate. So 6.8% of his attempts were touchdowns, and that is – that's high. That's two points o over the, the NFL average. And, and, like, on his career, he's about a 4.5% a uh, touchdown thrower, which, again, he's on a much better team now than he has been with the – where he was in Detroit and it was Megatron or bust. But at 6.8, I mean, I – if that number comes down, which I would expect it to, I mean, which also that would impact Cooper Cup uh, at the same time, but for him to replicate those types of numbers, I don't. It's just statistically not likely. Two things: one, their running game should be better than that, what they had last year. That as well, year. yes. Two, ten of the eighteen weeks he was quarterback ten or worse. Okay, so right. that's what you felt. You felt everyone else in the league starting a quarterback and you have one of the worst ones on the week more than half the time. So I, he, he wasn't, you know, giving you 20 or, or below, but he wasn't great. And the, the way that the story unfolded for him fantasy wise, where if you held on to him at, you know, week six, he was the QB four had a decent showing. And then he rattled off, uh, you know, three weeks in a row where he, he was a solid fantasy quarterback, but then he hurt you. And then he went into the bye week, and coming out of the bye, bye week, he was actually solid. But at that point, did you hold on to him through the bye week? Were you willing to to ride that out? Probably not. And then by the time you, you jump back in with Matthew Stafford in the fantasy football playoffs, he was very disappointing. And against Minnesota, man, QB 24 against Minnesota. Under 10 points. Uh, which was a delightful matchup. Also new offensive coordinator this, this uh, year as well. It's, Wink. Yeah, it's McVay. Um, do we have offensive assistant? Sorry, <laughs> offensive assistant. Do we have any additional thoughts on Stafford? Nope. Number eleven. Oh. Jalen Hurts of the Philadelphia Eagles. Jason has him up at six. Uh, Mike and I have him at twelve. 
Last year, 3,100 passing yards, uh, 16 passing touchdowns. Is that right? That is correct. Nine interceptions. So he finished as the quarterback nine last season. And um, the story for Jalen Hurts is one of rushing yardage, right? So you need to add in the 10 rushing touchdowns. Yeah. he he forty. I think the number is 43% of his entire fantasy points came running the football. So, um, you know, I think Philly will draft another wide receiver. Certainly. But they have – they, they – transform their offense to be very run heavy over the back half of the year. And they've basically said they're going to keep doing that. So uh, it's just a question of where do you think he's going to slot in? I think he's still a quarterback one, but your risk is, is still there for Jalen hurts. And um, so I, I, you know, Jason, you're the most bullish. Why don't you uh, tell us why? Yeah. I mean, one, I think that he is, capable he he has the rare skill set where he is capable of going nuclear he didn't necessarily do that right he was the consistent almost every week when he was healthy before the ankle injury at the end of the season he was a top 12 guy but he was never like the number one but because of the ability to rush for as many yards and touchdowns as he can if the passing game takes a level up which their weapons I think after the draft will be better I'm expecting him to have a little bit uh, you know, a better option to throw the ball to. Plus, he's a young guy that, you know, last year was his full, first full start. And so, I you know, I think he gets better this year than he was last year. And last year, on a points-per-game basis, he was the quarterback six. He was fantastic. Before the ankle injury, you know, he, he was so consistent. So the way I look at it is his upside is enormous, and his – Floor is really safe, barring injury. I I don't see anything to not like personally in in Justin Fields for fantasy football. In what, this about Jalen Hurts? what about Jalen Hurts though? Yeah, yeah I would prefer yeah, yeah, Jalen yeah, Hurts. Yeah. Being on Justin Fields? Yeah, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but I am in on Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't like my current ranking of Hurts. After the ankle injury, when he came back, he was averaging about 30 rushing yards a game. Where before that, when he was very solid, you know, he was rushing for over 57 yards a game. Uh, and I agree with Jason they, that he, I mean, he Devontae Smith, solid rookie season. But other than that, I mean, Dallas Goddard was okay. He sort of had Zach Ertz for a little bit before he traded him. But the rest of the wide receivers are pretty disappointing for the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're going to – I I do think they will bring somebody else in. And if, if that passing game does actually level up, Jalen Hurts, I think – He's one of these guys that we're we're talking about. He could be a monster for fantasy. They they basically reduced the uh, pass attempts per game by ten a game over the back half of the year. In fact, only the Patriots had a higher neutral situation rush rate. Um, so that's a concern. Is total volume for me? You know, when you throw for three thousand yards, um, you have to make you have to draw a line in the sand on whether or not those numbers are going to improve. Because if they don't improve. And he doesn't go double digit touchdowns on the ground, right? Then he won't finish as high as he did last year. And he so he threw a, a touchdown three point seven percent of his attempts, which is low. So I mean, even I'm okay with his volume being a bit lower. We just need that Lamar Jackson. Uh, when your passing volume is low, you're still hitting in the in the passing touchdowns as well. Aaron Rodgers at number ten, thirty eight years old. I've got him at eight. Mike at nine. Jason at thirteen. Currently being drafted at QB 12 overall. Just got paid all of the monies in the world. All of the monies. $150.8 million. Um, it's a long and storied career for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, had some very prolific weeks last year, week 11 and 12, number two overall on both of those weeks, back to back. Uh, you can always bank on a couple touchdowns from him, but he loses Devontae Adams, and I'm assuming that has a lot to do with what Jason's ranking is doing here. Um, but he's been a top 10 fantasy quarterback in nine of 11 seasons. So, Jason, you have him outside the top 10 this year, top 12. Yeah, he it, it is 100% Devontae Adams related. I mean, if you look at the last two years, Mike's been talking about the touchdown rate. His touchdown rate last two years was 9.1 and 7%. Great numbers. The, the two years prior to that, where he was still a great quarterback, He's still Aaron Rodgers um, in his prime, was 4.6%, 4.2%. 4 
that's far more what I expect. I expect him to be in the fours without his go-to weapon on the goal line um, when it comes to his touchdown rate. And if he loses that, he's not the Aaron Rodgers of old rushing-wise. So I, I could easily see him slipping outside of the top 12 for fantasy in a four-point passing touchdown league where rushing volume matters and you lost the best wide receiver in the game. Yeah, he's very difficult to gauge at this point of – <laughs> losing the number one guy that has to hurt but Rodgers has been so good for so long and if he, he didn't look like he was slowing down at all this past season so I don't he, he's very tricky because I don't want to bet on Aaron Rodgers for fantasy football I don't want to bet against yeah. Aaron Rodgers when it comes to fantasy football either uh, I'm in the midst of a uh, a mock we're doing with our writers. It's a 14 teamer, and I got Rodgers. I think I took the uh, it's like the 11th quarter. Wait, no, 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 13th quarterback or something. So he's good job right he, where I have him ranked. Yeah, he looks like he's going to be available later than usual, and I, you have to believe that the upside is is still there for a guy that is just he's 4030 basically every year. What's what was bewildering to me cuz I didn't expect to find it, but when you go back and you look from like 2017 on when Rodgers played without Devontae Adams, he averaged more fantasy points. Yeah. Like they're basically the same number but it's slightly higher without Devontae Adams, so he has always kind of found a way. And I don't know if he'll be able to continue to do that. The age factor is is a part of it, but um you know, he's one of those players that you could look back at after the draft and go, why didn't I just take him? Why didn't right. I just take, why did I go in on this player that, why didn't I just take Aaron Rodgers and play him at quarterback because he's safe? Um, and, you know, they they made a commitment to him, right? Like he's going yes. to be doing this for a couple more years. They're going to put pieces around him and maybe this draft is going to build that out pretty quickly with multiple uh, first round picks. Yeah. So, um, all right, we're going to get into uh, the rest of the quarterbacks, but let's take a quick break. You guys ready to talk Joe Burrow? Okay. Number nine, Joe Burrow. 25 years old. Jason has him at nine. Jason, um, Mike and I have him at 10. He had those two absolutely... <laughs> incredible number one overall finishes in week 16 and 17. He is the opposite of the playoff burns, right? Yes. He is the, he is the, you might've got a tattoo of Joe Burrow guy because of what he represented to your fantasy roster when it counted down the stretch and having players like Jamar Chase and T Higgins, it gives you this baseline of excellence at the wide receiver position. He could also be your mortal enemy. Who could? Uh, Joe Burrow. Really? Yeah, because he won a lot of people championships. Yeah, which means I mean, like your boy faced him in the playoffs. I, I see. I faced him. He could have ruined you. I we I faced him the week before me and my son. I see, and he destroyed our dreams. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but is he going to make people happy this year? Oh man. Yes. Oh, we're, we're going right to yes. Yeah, I'm going to go with yes as if I have to, you know, we're talking, uh, you don't want to bet on Rodgers, you don't want to bet against him. Mm -hmm. I would bet on Joe Burrow to level up. I know that a lot of production came those last two weeks, but before those two weeks, if you look at the first 15, he was still a top 10 quarterback. Um, he, you know, he wasn't bad. And the same way that I expect most year two players to level up and most young people to get better as they get into the prime of their career, you have a trifecta here of youth. You have Joe Burrow coming into his own off the Super Bowl run, so he's going to be more and more in control. He's further removed from the really bad knee injury he had, so he's fully healthy coming in, and now you've got a rookie and a second-year wide receiver who are, you know, going to level up themselves in Chase and T. Higgins. So I think the weapons um, combined with him taking over that town, I really think that they're going to give him the chance to be special. And, and I, d I haven't seen anything from him to make me believe that he'll fail. So if I'm going to bet at whether or not he's going to be special, I will bet that he will be. The bet, though, is on 
touchdown rate. It, it was on a guy who's being currently drafted as the QB six in best ball. So it might be priced and in. Like he has to be. He has to. Right. The, like because before the uh, before the explosion of those playoff weeks, he was the QB eleven in points per game. He was point six points better than Kirk Cousins on a points per game basis. One finish in the top eight. Through I mean, the first fifteen weeks, he Joe Burrow is with the same talent. Is that was so there. so difficult to gauge, but like in I, I love him. You know, if you have him in a dynasty league, that's that's very exciting. But in redraft, I am not paying the QB six price for for Joe Burrow. His touchdown rate doubled from three point two percent to six point five percent. So that will be something to pay attention to. He's in a very difficult division uh, in terms of the defenses he's going to face. So he gets to face Cleveland twice. He gets to play, um, obviously, the Ravens and uh, Steelers twice. So it will be interesting to see if he can kind of replicate the magic of the end of the year th consistently through the season. And I think that's going to be the bet. But it seems like everybody's betting that he will with the price. Yes, they are. Yeah, and, I, and it's, it's... So he probably won't be on my teams either. Yeah, I, I I get betting against the fantasy ceiling because of the lack of rushing production. I, I still wonder how much of that was the knee, but I, I also think as he's progressing as a pocket passer, he won't be relying on the running. He does have the capability to do it. Um, I, I, I understand if you're saying he's going as a top six guy, maybe you... You feel like, well, that's probably what his ceiling is without the rushing production, so maybe it's not worth it. But if he finishes the season as the quarterback five, I I, I think that there's good odds that he's right up there with the best of them. Oh, I, I think he can finish as a top six guy. It's just playing the market is what makes he'll me He'll have out. to throw 40. I mean, he'll have to throw 40 touchdowns to do that. He'll have to, he'll have to get close, yeah. Um, Dak Prescott at eight. How are we feeling about Dak? Because uh, <laughs> it's it's a weird it's a weird yeah. vibe with Dak right now. Mike and I have him at seven. Jason has him at ten. Um, Dallas scores a bunch of points. They ship off Amari Cooper. Dak is you know he's got enough seasons under his belt where you kind of it's like how Russ has been right where you kind of look at it and he just he's always there right. I mean he's always in the top twelve. Bar other than which he has been for five seasons, other than his injury season, mm -hmm. he's had uh, multiple finishes uh, much higher than that. And you know, I just don't want to be in that position. Now he's being drafted as the quarterback eight, right where we have him. So I guess he's not being discounted very much. And he did all of that. So you know, forty five hundred yards, thirty seven passing touchdowns, and he didn't get his usual uh, just. A couple rushing touchdown bumps. Like he, he's not prolific when it comes to running the ball, but frequently when they get inside the five, he calls his own number, and he goes in. You know, he started his career with the mark of the beast. Yeah, he, yeah, he hit him with the six, 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 and then three rushing touchdowns. Yes, yes that is the first yeah, three. Seasons. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, and then three, and he had three in his season when he played five games. So. To have done what he did last year without that that normal, uh, you know, just a little extra juice uh, every once in a while from the rushing touchdowns, he, and they're going to address the wide receiver position as as well. I they are that dark horse team. I think that can grab a wide receiver in the first. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It, he, I, I think he will be a top twelve guy again, but. The ceiling I worry about a little bit because losing Amari Cooper and having CeeDee Lamb, who now has the opportunity to really be special, it's just a matter of how confident are you that CeeDee Lamb really, really, really will take that leap to being a superstar, and I've got I've got fears around that, sure. so I, I think that the ceiling is capped with Dak. They will score a bunch of points. He oh. will be a top 12 guy, but I just doctor, don't think... doctor, man. I don't think he's got the weapons to be the top five. <laughs> I, I like the doctor a lot. O outside of Dalton Schultz and C.D. Lamb, their weapons, they don't have any. Well, he gallop once he's back, but that's a right. That's, that's a TBD. I mean, right now it's kind of thin. So, uh, got to fix the weapons and got to you know give him uh, more of a ceiling. I think is what fantasy players would like to see. Uh, number seven, Thomas. 
Brady. <laughs> Again. Because he once retired, <laughs> and he was retired for a really long time, and then... What? No. And then he, he was, wasn't retired anymore. He was running low. I mean, guys, he's four, He's going to be 45. <laughs> he's incredible. I mean, that is a silly age to be producing 5,300 yards and 43 touchdowns. I, I so think that he's was quarterback gonna, three last year, by the way. Yeah, I think he's going for 45 <laughs> touchdowns at 45. So... Um, if he if he gets that, will you be happy, Andy? If he gets forty five touchdowns, I I just don't think he can do it. Yeah, I mean, but he has uh, forty five is absurd. He ha but he has to <laughs> because he's, he's forty five, yeah. um, including playoffs. No, oh, well, no, oh, okay. no. These are regular season stats. The the weapons are. That was my question. Is with without Chris Godwin, uh, because Chris Godwin was going to miss time because of the ACL. How comfortable are without you? Without Gronk, without Antonio Brown. I think Gronk will be there. Um, okay. I found it skipping, funny. Skimping some camp. I found it funny that uh, when you're betting on who, there's like a, a prop bet of who catches the first touchdown from B Brady. Mike right. Evans had the best odds, and Gronk had the second best odds, oh, who goodness. isn't even on the roster right now. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, skipping some camp. Gronk currently is not there. Um, Godwin has, you know, that, that very similar timeline um to Gallup where he could be there early and be okay uh but it could take a while they signed uh Russell Gage and they've got Mike Evans so uh, assuming that Gronk is there I'm still fine believing that Brady's going to throw a bunch of touchdowns this division is ripe for the taking that's yeah. four four easy games and I mean how can you bet against him after him basically always doing it he's being drafted as the quarterback nine after a quarterback three finish now that might get swayed over the course of the offseason and camp but right now Brady you know if you believe that he should stand out as one of your biggest values right now yeah he he will be I don't think he'll be in the top 10 when it comes to the draft day because he's old and even though he had a great season there are uh, we see it time and time and time again these it, with Brady himself he's you feel like his arrow can only point down. There's, you know, so so you're you're swinging for the fences on guys like Jalen Hurts. Like Jalen Hurts will be drafted ahead of Tom Brady, and so even though I like Jalen Hurts and I I, I see the potential, maybe I think the, Hurts is QB eleven right now. We'll, we'll see post draft with weapons, um, but I you know if Brady drops to be the quarterback ten or eleven or you know, something like that in draft day, I'll end up with a lot of them. So if, if that happens, how do you go in early in the middle rounds of your draft on Joe Burrow? You shouldn't. Or just wait and even go early on. Like you could, if the, if the disparity is that w wide of QB six to QB 10, I mean, you can take Tom Brady two rounds early. Well, this is, oh, I do not like talking about Tom Brady all the time. Just retire. This is one of the, the problems with, the dip, drafting a quarterback who doesn't run pretty high because of what you're talking about. Like Joe Burrow, when I said he has to throw 40, right? Brady threw 40 two years ago, 40 and 12 finished as the quarterback eight. Right. So it took 43 of them to get him up to quarterback three, but it's like, you know, Burrow can go out and throw 40 and end up the quarterback eight. And then somebody like Jalen Hurts can go out and throw 16 and end up the quarterback six or seven. So that is just the uh, the gamble, and it, it's something that we've done as fantasy players for years and years and years. It used to be the, the Phillip Rivers gamble. Oh, are you going to get a 40, a right. 40 from River? It used to be the Matthew Stafford gamble, right? One, once Matthew Stafford gave you one season with Calvin where he threw 40 touchdowns, you spent the next five saying, here comes, I mean, you can only get better. Mm -hmm. So where's the 40 touchdowns? And that's the hard part with, that dependency because it cannot be their fault. They can lead the team on a drive down the field and then it's at the one yard line and the and Joe Mixon scores or Leonard Fournette scores and it's like, well, that that was just somebody falling over a, a yard short. Right. Uh Russell Wilson. Unlimited. Coming in at number six. <laughs> so Russ makes his debut in Denver. Yeah, uh, he's free from the conservative play calling of Pete Carroll. P. 
Peach Cobbler himself should see more early down pass attempts. That's inevitable. They're going to let Russ cook. I don't know. I I, I have heard that altitude affects uh, cooking. Yeah, and yeah, the food you, get, you eat and the taste. Yeah, Be- and you're going to be mile high. It changes. So I'm not sure what it's going to taste like. Well, I mean, you do the cooking by the book. Thank you. you, know you can't be lazy. <laughs> I am in. Me too. Man, I am. I am all. The chips are all in for Russell Wilson. Uh, I the the second half of last year looked terrible. I am. I'm choosing to believe that was completely uh, the the finger injury came back before he needed to come back and he just he couldn't even hold on to the football properly he is surrounded by talent so like his his situation of going from Lockett and DK to Judy Fireball Jones and Cortland Sutton I think it's a pretty lateral move then you you toss in that you know a that Nathaniel Hackett is going to be the guy calling the shots here and bringing that more of a pass heavy approach. I think that Russ Wilson will finally be unleashed and I am fascinated to watch and I'm I'm betting that he's going to have great fantasy success. Yeah, he's he's never in his entire career until this injured season been outside a top 12 quarterback. Now, there's a lot of historical data of quarterbacks changing teams usually gets worse for them. But this is a very specific situation of a superstar changing teams from a team that did not want to let him be unleashed. Um, and that's, I think, the reason why he wanted out is he wanted to be able to play like he sees Mahomes play. And right. I mean, he, he even made comments to that point um, in the past of talking about he sees what Kansas City is doing and wishes, you know, they could play like that. And then he gets his way out of town, has the weapons, and I, I think he's well, going to be a, a top 10 guy. Yeah, I think we, and we all agree on that. The one thing that we haven't seen is um, him do it in, in an efficient way because when, when he, he did get away from him, right? Like two years ago when they finally – they had that go in the first half of the year, he became very turnover prone in the back half of the year, and it was kind of uncharacteristic. And so if he is allowed to do it, will there be some side effects to that? Will you have somebody that turns the ball over more? I Possible. don't know. I hope um, so. But <laughs> – Give me Jameis Winston for fantasy. But uh, let's get into our top five. Number five, Lamar Jackson. Uh, we all ranked very similarly. Uh, Lamar, <laughs> we haven't had that MVP season from him in a little while, but the baseline and the amount of this offense that he has to carry for the roster, you know, it's all on his back every single week. And that's great for fantasy, right? You want somebody that's going to basically look at every play like I have to do something here, either with his legs or uh, in the passing game, probably to Mark Andrews. And so that's what you're banking on with this ranking. He's being drafted as the quarterback four in best ball. He was the quarterback five last year in points per game before the injury, and that's what you should pay attention to. Finished at 15, but missed a bunch of time with injury. Yeah, he's the quarterback five, and their offense was really – hindered by the fact that all their running backs got injured you know they're they're going to score more points with juice than they will with Latavius Murray and a 100 year old Devonta Freeman I, I think that the offense moves better and he showed on film I, I thought some some good passing the uh the weapons of Mark Andrews and Hollywood and Bateman are really really good so it's just a matter of volume with him but because of the rushing upside I mean we've obviously seen what he can do I don't think we will we'll ever see him do what he did the year where he wasn't he like nine percent touchdown rate yes uh, a asinine and I don't think he'll get back to there ever again but he like you said Andy in that season last year he was fifth in points per game and I don't feel like we were super happy with him anyways he when you run like he does, your floor is just so high. You can't really fall outside of being a quarterback one. The, the problem last year was the inconsistency of his spike weeks were he had a few of them and they were huge. And then he was just he, he kind of eh. But also, we got to go back to who is juice, Jason? I'm saying not a person, but running backs with juice, having juice oh. at the position, having. Uh, we were both wondering. <laughs> 
Yeah. If I, that was a nickname for, for like for somebody. Dob, J.K. Dobbins. I was like, is that Melvin for, Gordon? You J think he's going to land in there? No, I'm just saying that J.K. Dobbins will come I back. I like and juice. Actually, don't get me wrong. It, well, I mean, I don't know what the J stands for in J.K. Dobbins. Juice. So it is. Juice Pro Dobbins? It is probable that it's juice. Probable. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, juice kidding Dobbins. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Like yeah. Uh, also, I don't think you can nickname running backs Juice anymore. Yeah. That's probably not the best thing mm. to do. No. Kind of ruined that, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. With all the murdering. Oh. Uh, all right. Number four, Kyler Murray, who was the quarterback four uh, through the Cardinals' hot start last year. Also went down with an injury, missed weeks 9 through 11 with an ankle injury. Um, had 423 rushing yards on the ground uh, last season. Finished at QB 10, but again, he missed basically mm, three weeks. I guess he got injured at the end of the Green Bay game. Yes. Yeah, no, the Green Bay game, he played the whole thing and got hurt on yeah. like, the last play. Uh, he had a great deep ball last year, tied Tom Brady for the most 20-plus yard completions. Uh, he, here's a spoiler alert. If they don't draft somebody, that's going down. Christian Kirk was a big part of that down the field. So they, they do need to – like, to me, this ranking is – dependent on them investing on a first round and I do not a second round a first round wide receiver or trading for one of these prolific Metcalf style situations and surprising us because right now going into the going into the season with Hopkins who is at this point in his career that's the Kyler crutch like he hasn't had prolific success without Hopkins so Hopkins and Rondale Moore and AJ Green uh, back on another year. That's not enough for me to keep him. Now, I have him at five. You guys have him at four. But it's not enough to keep him at five for me um, unless they add somebody. Yeah, he's fragile. Um, and I mean that not just in, oh, he's small, he can get injured. Emotionally. That, that, right, thank you. I'm speaking of his person. Um, no, I'm saying that his fantasy value is enormous. He can easily be the number one quarterback Three number one but finishes last year despite missing three games. Yeah, and, and, and you know, two years ago, he was on track to be the number one quarterback, got injured, and then wasn't good the rest of the way and fell out of that spot. Last year, he started on fire and looked great. You lose Hopkins, and all of a sudden, he feels like you don't know how to play. The team is very shallow. They don't have a lot of weapons. So if Hopkins gets injured, um, if Rondale doesn't step up if Kyler gets injured I think at the beginning of the year when everybody's healthy and we click go Kyler is going to be phenomenal he's going to be you're gonna be so happy you drafted him but it's a fragile situation where I won't be surprised if it's th a third year in a row where it starts great and things go wrong and he hasn't proven that he can overcome bad situations get over the cliff yet. you're saying <laughs> oh yes yeah. i yeah. liked it um yeah i mean contract drama probably gonna get paid yeah probably i think, think so. so and uh so we'll see what happens it, one of the weird things in in us being out here in arizona there's plenty and and um you know the off season has been really great for arizona but one of the weird things is is sometimes they lean on kyler to run the football and then sometimes they don't do it at all. So why is that, Mike? Uh, why? Do why do they? Why do they like have him run it, and then it seems like a huge advantage? And then other games are like, no, we're not going to run you at all. And then it's like not an advantage. Oh, anymore. it's because their coach sucks. All right, Patrick Mahomes at number three, but he's around for a very long time. We all have him at number three. Finished yes. at QB four last year, and so uh, very safe, very. Interesting to see him without Tyree Kill unlocking parts of this offense. However, if you did want to say, hey, give me the best possible situation to remove a superstar wide receiver, I would say, well, give me like the best quarterback on pure skill in the league. Give me the best offensive play caller, potentially, with Andy Reid and the ingenuity in the offense. And then give me a tried and true tight end like, you know, Travis Kelsey. Like, there's a lot of reasons to say maybe you don't get the bursts, but maybe you do. Maybe McCall Hardman catches one this week. Maybe it's Juju next week. Maybe it's another draft pick the week after that. And they just spread Tyreek out across other options. 
Yeah, MVS is known to have big weeks and yes, then disappear, he and he's yeah. part of this team now. Um, Patrick Mahomes was interesting. I wondered how far he would drop for all of us. Obviously, he finished quarterback four last year, and you presume gets worse without Tyreek Hill, but when, I, when I'm putting these rankings together, it's really difficult to bet against what you just described, Andy. When you are Patrick Mahomes at 26 years old with Andy Reid and other good weapons, it's really hard. You're You're making a bet to say, you're not going to figure it out, and I'm not taking that bet. So that's why he's up at three. I have nothing to add. Well, I did two of the top three quarterbacks are in the same division, and part of why that's great is because they play each other, and now they play Russell Wilson, and now they play Derek Carr and Devontae Adams. So Justin Herbert comes in at number two. We've all got him there, so our top three are identical. Yeah. Look at us. Look All us. right, uh, 38 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 5,000 passing yards, three rushing touchdowns, finished at QB2, and was hot magma from week 11 on last season. Uh, same head coach, same offensive coordinator, same wide receivers, same running back. Offensive line improved. They were uh, – it was just a perfect scenario for Justin Herbert to, to make the leap as a – to become a perennial fantasy football power. And so, you know, if you're staring down Justin Herbert or Patrick Mahomes in a dynasty league. Oh, it's Justin Herbert. He's, he's to me, got the same. Really? Yeah, it is. He's two years younger. He has. Um, that's not enough. Yeah, that's not enough. That quarterback. <laughs> that, does, that, 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 that part doesn't matter to me that much. I, it matter, I, I, think it's a hot point away. I think it's a hot debate. I, I think it is a, a, a valued debate where I will take the two extra years when I look at these guys as near enough to coin flips without Tyree kill. Like I, you know, I mean, obviously this year, this year we have Justin Herbert ranked above Patrick Mahomes and he's younger. So on a redraft, Currently. sure. I, 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 the future weapons that might come for Patrick Mahomes. I mean, obviously Travis Kelsey will be going away at some point in the future. Um, you know, part of this, too, is the fact that we talk about Andy Reid and how valuable that is for, uh, you know, Mahomes. But I love the fact that the Chargers are going to go for it on fourth down left, right and center. They're going to try to put up points like it's a video game, like they're playing fantasy football. And I love that for opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, if you want to say that Mahomes is better for a dynasty than Herbert, sure, fine. I would draft Herbert ahead of Mahomes personally. All right, uh, Herbert comes in at two in redraft, and uh, maybe Jason likes him because he has the most completions, attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns ever through the first two seasons for a quarterback. I'd like you to run Which also Patrick Mahomes would have had if he didn't like skip most of his first year. But what were you going to yeah. say, Mike? I'd, say I'd like uh, Justin Herbert to run just a little bit more. Okay, but stay safe. Yeah, uh, but the dude, he's, he is built like Josh Allen. The dude is a tank. You could get at least you could add a hundo to that. Rush for four hundred and four. Are you putting in a formal request? Yes. All right, Jason. Let's see if your little age situation pans out here. Josh Allen is our number one overall quarterback who is almost twenty six years old. And the Stallion Ooh, himself, I mean a lot of you know, a lot of tackles on that body in those extra two years. Who are you taking in a dynasty league, Justin Herbert or Josh Allen? Josh Allen. He's he, But he's one point eight years older. He, he's younger than Mahomes. <laughs> and and when you can combine, I mean, it's just what you say. You wish that Herbert ran the ball more. We talked about it. If you don't throw for forty touchdowns, you can you could throw for forty touchdowns and finish behind someone that throws for sixteen touchdowns because they run the ball. Fantasy football, that's how the quarterback position is scored. They score more for rushing touchdowns. They score more for rushing yards. It's not fair, but it's the game we play. And Josh Allen is firmly entrenched to me as the number one in both redraft and dynasty. Super fair. Super fair. I got you. Uh, almost half the time, he was a top four quarterback in terms of weekly finish. That's difference making, right? He was number one overall five times. Mm-hmm. And six rushing touchdowns, that's not a number that's strange. It could go up. That's low. I mean, that, he can go 10. He can Cam Newton, or he can throw the ball uh, to Stephon Diggs, who just got a new contract. So That was his career low in rushing touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. What a loser. Yeah, so, loser. Hey, Quarterback one. 763 rushing yards for Josh Allen. That was his career high. Do you hear that? 
Justin Herbert. <laughs> hey, you, you're trying to inspire again. Uh, I'm just, I'm saying he's kind of a, a, a weenie. Oh. Bark, bark, yeah, bark. yeah. Bark, bark, bark. Go, go run. <laughs> you're, you're just going grade school. Look, Justin Herbert. Grade school techniques for fantasy football benefit. D- look, it's an let's, embarrassment. Let's look at the names. Josh Stallion. Yeah. And Justin Herbert. Have we, we've, like, Justin Herbert versus Josh Stallion. You want to s- we say big herbs. Yeah, okay. But try that against Josh Stallion. Well, look, we'll we'll, we'll work on it. No, Jay- no, I will not work on it until he works on it. Well, Jason's going to have to. He just put him ahead of Mahomes. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Those two years. All right, so Allen at one. I, you guys both have him ahead this year. Right now. So, okay. Well, I, I just think in a dynasty league, like sometimes you factor in longevity of elite play, and Herbert has – had a smaller sample. So I just thought it was at least a debate. You answered so quickly that it caught us off guard. And then the answer being the two years, I'm like, this guy's played for like 15 years. It, su- it just surprised me. Will but you? I don't think it's a wrong call. Will you be shocked if Kansas City doesn't spend at least a day two pick on a wide receiver? Yes. That's, ex- that's what I'm saying. So for now, I mean, like they could be the big winners when it comes to uh, the draft. My pro Herbert stance is not an anti Mahomes stance. Uh, that's not what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do one more thing before we close it out. Dynasty download. Mike, you like the uh, My- the video component for that drop? My head is so large. This is what we live with every day. Yeah, we have to look at it. Yeah. I have to carry it. That's true. (laughs) Do you know how buff my neck is? Yeah, your neck is legit. (laughs) I have to carry it. Uh, Nice spine, though. Um, All right. It's breaking down. Here's a Dynasty question for you. What player will Dynasty managers be most upset about after the NFL draft? Now, the way that I thought this question was was bending towards is I didn't think it was going to be rookies. It's whatever, but it's whatever. It yeah. So I went with Devonte Smith. I, I, I just Devonte Smith is a very, very good wide receiver. Um, he is still maybe a two at the NFL level. If you spend a first round draft pick in Philadelphia on a prolific, larger, prototypical number one. And then you try to break 23 passing attempts per game up from Jalen Hurts. Because I think if Jalen goes more than that, you're going to get some turnovers. You're going to get some issues. It, and they like what they did at the end of the year. So I think you're getting 25 pass attempts a game. I just think Devontae Smith could get boxed into the same situation that I was as a fantasy player with him last year. When he didn't have that. Like, he didn't have that around him. And it was still a one in four type of situation. He was difficult to know when to start. Right now, it feels like, oh, he's a great dynasty asset. And But if you add somebody great in Philadelphia, I think you may end up a very sad. I, generally, when like a wide receiver who has the, the, you know, the production profile, the, the draft capital that Devontae Smith is, I'm not scared of incoming rookies. I welcome them in because it, it's if you're going to bail on that player, you, you know, do you actually think that player is any good? And I think Devontae Smith is good and can level up. Uh, but I agree with if the pie with Jalen Hurts is that small. It's like T. Higgins. And right now, like Quez Watkins had 13% of the targets. Jalen Rager had 12% of those targets. I mean, it. I'm not saying yeah. there's not room for him, but it has to be a higher passing volume offense Yeah, to really make you count on him. And so if a Jamar Chase-like player goes to the Higgins situation, that's great whenever Burrow's throwing 40 times a game. It's not great if it's 25. So I'm just a little bit worried about how he'll be perceived in dynasty circles and how his trade value will get affected if somebody like more prolific goes there. I, I would agree with you that people will be upset. I would disagree that he would become the two. There's not a wide receiver in this draft. Like my number one wide receiver, I don't think, could be is better than Devonte Smith, so I think that he'll. I mean, they need someone else. They need a two desperately. Yeah. And I, I think in reality that could open things up. Other than the the market share of a small pie is something. What sixteen touchdowns, passing touchdowns? Oh yeah. What if Traylon Burks goes there, right? And he's the goal line 
threat well, compared Tra- to Devontae Smith. Traylon Burks is my answer to this question because I think that there is potential that he falls further than you know the the, the dynasty draft community it can be better if you fall though uh sure it, it can be and so long as you know you're not like tumbling down um and nfl teams are passing you multiple times but um you know uh, before this last couple of months the dynasty community Traylon burks was the clear yes. number one and i think that he is you know of the top five he'll be the fifth one drafted um, and I wouldn't be shocked yeah, if sixth, maybe. other people go ahead of him. And he, yeah, he's the sixth or the seventh. If people are looking for something different or they're afraid of how he was utilized in college. So his landing spot, I think, could be worrisome. Uh, obviously, we'll know at the end of this week. And I'm going with. Let's end the show, Andy. <laughs> uh, wrap it up. Jason doesn't want to hear it because uh, he knows it's true. It's Brees Hall uh, who. Is, uh, he's still clearly my number one rookie running back. I think that he is still the 101 in rookie drafts regardless of landing spot because I think the talent is there and the situation can improve. Where I think that people will be sad is there, the best like opportunity spot that he could go would be the Houston Texans. And he's going to go there. He's going to soak up all the work for the Houston Texans. Texans like at what point does that team turn things around and like and he could soak up some of the work in his rookie right season. I'm just like long term fully in on Brees Hall but I think after the draft there's going to be some slight blowback of what a crappy landing spot for Brees Hall but that is only because there are no good landing spots. Come on, Buffalo! Like that's is, yeah. Is Buffalo Buffalo's the best? my favorite? Buffalo feels like the best spot, high powered offense. But they they don't use their running backs. Well, and, they, and, and the when stallion they, runs for ten rushes. They're not going to give him all the work as a rookie on a team about to make the Super Bowl. They they absolutely will not. So. No, I I agree with that. They Sorry. wouldn't. I I think that the majority of landing spots outside of Atlanta, the Jets, and Houston he will take time to develop. Like, I'm terrified about the Titans being a surprise oh, to grab yeah. him, and then he's just going to sit for a couple of years. I'll, I'll probably still take him one-on-one because I think he'll be great when it – Right. Know, but I think he's probably 104, 105. Really? I think by the time the draft's over, the shine of some of these destinations and some of these wide receivers, if Brees Hall goes in the second round and you've got six or seven wide receivers before him and half of those are going to places that you really – Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. I think that there's awesome. a chance that, that Brees ends up at least at three. I'm so excited. There, yeah, there's some very juicy wide receiver We should do the spots. draft this week. We should have the NFL draft on Thursday. Yeah, I'll I'm call, in. I'll call some people. All right, make some phone calls. All right, I think that's going to do it for today's show. One final reminder for you, Ultimate Draft Week, come celebrate with us. Get your shot at the Listener League. You know you're getting the Ultimate Draft Kit already. You know you're going to do that when the draft season runs around. If you don't know that, change your attitude. Um, but if you get in now, you got Why, it's a discounted price right now. Best price and tons of prizes. Yeah, so you can win a, uh, a Justin Jefferson jersey, uh, Debo Samuel jersey, Listener League entry. So before May 1st, that's all it takes, yep. ultimatedraftkit.com. And don't forget about Footballers Ultimate Draft Week Mania. With the community event on Wednesday, we're live with the party room on Spotify Live on Thursday, and then we'll be live on YouTube on Friday. I'm going to be tired on Saturday. That's what I just learned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. But it's worth it for the people. That's right. We'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.